Hey boys and girls, uh, welcome again here to Monroe Live. Um, today, we've uh, got John Eggert, and um, he's a director of uh, new business development over at uh, FLIR. And uh, you've heard me talk about this technology in the past. Um, this is the one that I think is uh, the real winner. Uh, I've never been a fan of most of the other stuff, and I see that even Elon Musk has abandoned ship on, uh, on, the, uh, on the radar thing, so John, uh, thank you so much for, for coming over and driving all the way from Oregon with your, uh, with your vehicle here. Actually drove from Minnesota, but that's okay. Minnesota. Oh, yeah, it says, it this says vehicle Oregon was on it. housed in, that used to be the headquarters, but uh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we're housed in Minnesota so that we can be close to Detroit most of the time. But it's wonderful oh, to meet you today, cool. Sandy. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'm glad that you're here. Um, you know, uh, we've got a few questions that we've written down, but, um, but um, I, I just like to know a little bit about your background. First off, what, uh, how did you get to where you got to? Yeah, I'm one of those uh, rare people in self-driving cars that actually started in automotive way back when. I probably started not long after you started Monroe & Associates oh, yeah. um, in the automotive industry with a company called uh, Spartan Electronics. Pretty high-tech company at the time. They were involved in neural networks and electronics and vehicles. But like many of the companies I've worked at in automotive, they went bankrupt or didn't go bankrupt. They went out of the business and left the automotive business. Hmm. Um, I also worked for Alan Breed. He invented the airbag crash sensor back yeah. when it wasn't solid state. It was a ball and tube. So early on, I was involved with passive safety. Um, up until recently, I was working at, uh, at an NVH company that did contract manufacturing for automakers. And the kids left the house, and I thought, well, what's next? And in the Bay Area, I hmm. saw these uh, Waymo vehicles, or at that time it was Google vehicles, with these giant spinning turret-like things on top of them. Yeah. I thought, I don't know what those things are, but being an automotive peddler, I knew that there must be some value in it because it's so ugly on top of the vehicle. Nobody yeah. would put that there unless it, yeah. it meant something to the self-driving mission. So within a couple of weeks, I, I pretty much became the first automotive LiDAR salesperson uh, in 2015, mm. and that was at Velodyne LiDAR. Um, as I worked at Velodyne, uh, I started seeing more and more of our L4 customers, L4, level 4 autonomy yeah, customers, right. uh, using thermal imaging. And I thought there really is an opportunity to improve the safety and performance of these vehicles through thermal. Right. And so I joined FLIR uh, late in 2019 to do pretty much the same thing I'm doing now. And it, it, quite frankly, thermal is at the position where uh, LiDAR was probably five years ago. It's being rapidly adopted by level four autonomy companies. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that it will be adopted by automakers for ADAS functions in the future. Well, great. I, uh, I, uh, I only know the term FLIR is forward-looking infrared. Um, how did you uh, acquire uh, that name? Because um, like everybody that knows anything about missiles and bombs for sure, um, and actually fighter jets and whatnot. We use FLIR continuously. So how did you manage, does that mean anything or is it just the, the, uh, the, uh, the name of the company or how did that work out? Yeah, that was chosen for that particular reason. Um, and uh, to be frank, I started at FLIR, by the way, now it's Teledyne FLIR. Teledyne yeah. acquired FLIR at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Um, I started right before the pandemic, so I've been to Teledyne FLIR's offices a total of two times since I've started. So a lot of the history is lost on me, oh. uh, unfortunately, but uh, I'm learning the technology remotely. Uh, and just having uh, the ability to interact with my colleagues through Zoom is probably the, the main way in which I'm, I'm taking in information. Mm. But um, yeah, FLIR actually started in the automotive industry quite a while ago. It's one of those autonomous sensors that has a long history and, and mm. proven history in automotive almost 17 years ago, BMW first implemented uh, long wave infrared. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been through four generations since then of what we call night vision. Yeah. The latest one is on the Cadillac Escalade 2021. It's, it's the fourth generation of it. And it's the first VGA resolution uh, thermal imaging we see right. on vehicles. Great. Well, um, you said you just basically have come to FLIR, but um, but what what sort of uh, what sort of um, new inventive things have has uh, FLIR done that uh, other thermal industry or ther thermal uh, vision systems uh, what's what's new or, or 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 different about yours? 
Well, everything FLIR does is new for the industry because right now, as we speak, FLIR has 100% of the automotive market share. It's a very small business right now, yeah. but uh, significant nonetheless. We've already made 1 million sensors for cars. But, so every time FLIR iterates, uh, whether it's going to smaller pixel sizes and higher resolution or increased uh, quality and reliability, and probably the next thing is going to be moving into ADAS functions, which means uh, functional yeah. safety yeah. Um, and, and cost reduction, size reduction, those kinds of things that you need for uh, automotive sensors. Well, that's kind of like why I like uh, forward-looking infrared, uh, because uh, when I was um, you know, working on military kinds of things, uh, I have to know what's going on. I have to be able to see through anything. And uh, so consequently to me, it was the right thing to do, but you've got so many other different systems out there. Um, you, you, mentioned, uh, you mentioned different LiDAR systems, mobile eye and whatnot. All the, how, how, uh, how much of a difference is there between you and where they are? What can you do that they can, I guess, would be a better way to put it. I would say that if, if the first rule of robotics is to not harm a human, yeah. this is the best technology to see a human on the road, bar none. Mm -hmm. uh, from, a, from a reliability, a cost, and uh, um, detectability, it's the absolute best technology on the market right now. It just hasn't been used there. There isn't a lot of uh, research that was done in self-driving cars early on with a thermal imaging because it was highly restricted. And it still is export controlled. It's one of those sensors that's very difficult to get into China. We can yeah. do it, but it, it takes a little working with the U.S. government to do so. So mm. uh, what we do better than anyone else is to see living things. Right. And, and, and that's the frankly, value proposition. That's, that's the big thing for me. As far as I'm concerned, um, uh, there's a lot of things that you can, um, in fact, you can see everything if you, if you put a mind to it with FLIR. You can see everything it's not just living things but even even inanimate objects um, have different uh, color spectrums and um, you should be able to pick things out so I my big thing it's not on the list here but my big thing is um, is uh, color imaging with FLIR have you guys uh, tipped down uh, uh, gone down that path yet uh, as a matter of fact, we, on the vehicle that we have today, we are demonstrating a blending of, of thermal with uh, RGB. So kind of a colorized image, if you will. Yeah. Right. Well, I've seen some pretty s snappy ones. Uh, uh, I was really impressed with <clears throat> um, some, of the, some of the imaging systems I've seen that, uh, you know, over here I've got the, the classic either green or orange kind of a faded image. And then over here... I can see the guy, the color of the guy's eyes. I mean, it's amazing how how accurate and everything can possibly be. I think that that would really be uh, something that it's something that I'm looking forward to. I, I think that it's the right um, the right technology that everybody should adopt. Yeah, we see a couple of applications for that: the augmented reality to make a much more vivid uh, mm -hmm. view of the world for the driver is is yeah. one of those where you can blend those two images and, and get pretty good results. So much, what kind of power or computing power do you need to, to make all this stuff work? So one advantage of thermal is it is lower resolution than, than an RGB camera. Yeah. So it requires a little less compute power. And FLIR actually is an AI company. Teledyne FLIR is an AI company uh, for several years now. Not necessarily for the auto industry, but it's coming into play very well now that uh, ADAS mm. and, and AVs are coming into play. So we've always got an eye towards making our neural networks compatible with the compute systems on vehicles today. So mm. uh, just as a very general benchmark, if you think of uh, next generation uh, ADAS control units or even lower power things like uh, infotainment systems, mm -hmm. we feel that our neural network needs to run on, on those sorts of, of compute systems. So nothing too fancy. You don't need a ton of GPUs to make these things uh, work. Cool. Um, who do you see as your competition? Um, in other sensing modalities, not too many. I think thermal does things distinctly on its own uh, that no other sensing modalities will be able to do. Um, within thermal imaging, I think there are a lot of companies that do thermal imaging and do it pretty well, yeah. I, I think, around the world. 
but as you know, automotive is a tough nut to crack, and it's something that uh, Teledyne Fleer has been doing for more than a decade. And we've learned a lot of lessons over the years about what works and what doesn't work on in a car. And I think that's that gives us a unique head start over mm. folks who are not in automotive today. And, and yeah. frankly, no one's in automotive right now. So who are you targeting? Who are your target customers? So within the self-driving space, the level four autonomy space, uh, anyone you can think of in there, I, if I were to give you a rough number, I'd say about 70% of the self-driving car companies including you know, the, uh, the most advanced ones, are using thermal imaging or evaluating thermal imaging today. So uh, the analogy I gave you at the beginning, this was like LIDAR five years ago. People are just starting to realize the value of that in autonomy. Mm. But uh, also we see as targets uh, OEMs for augmented reality systems, blending the color and the thermal, uh, and also for ADAS systems. There are a few things going on in the pedestrian detection uh, uh, pedestrian detection AEB market right now. Uh, IIHS sent a letter to the automakers at the beginning of the year saying that in 2023 they anticipate including uh, pedestrian detection uh, in dark as part of their evaluation mm. process for the top safety pick plus. There's also bills in, in Congress right now where language has been accepted to uh, in, to uh, regulate commercial vehicles to have AEB functioning in all the scenes in which they drive, so they'd be at night, in rain, etc. And so we see a lot of push to improve uh, the detection of vulnerable road users uh, with the AEB systems in the future. Hmm. Well, um, you've got this one stuck in a Lexus, and um, this, uh, this is, you know, very interesting. What about the, uh, what about the, uh, like the startup uh, OEMs, not the big boys, but is there going to be uh, uh, some kind of a discount or something that will allow them to get into the market without, uh, without basically bankrupting their company? <laughs> well, the, the good thing about uh, thermal imaging is that it already comes at a reasonable price point. It's not a $1,000 sensor that's unique to, you know, to, to self-driving. So startups, uh, they can get started very quickly using a thermal camera, buy one of them off the shelf, and uh, evaluate perhaps even FLIR's, thermal, uh, Teledyne FLIR's uh, neural network. And, you know, willing to do that for any of your customers free of charge, Sandy. <laughs> free of charge, woohoo! Well, sure. we've got at least five of them that are going to be there jumping up and down for that one, yeah? And yeah, so um, I guess, uh, I guess um, uh, the big question is, and it's the only one I actually read, <laughs> is um, um, how do they get in touch with you? Oh, john.eggert at teledyneflir.com. There you go. So I, what I'd really like to do is, um, is get a chance to uh, see what this is doing and how it does it. Uh, so maybe we can take, well, let's actually walk around here so you can explain all these different boxes hanging on this thing. So uh, <laughs> let's, um, let's just take a quick run and, and have a look uh, over here as to what, what all this stuff uh, means. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, John, um, what, what is all this stuff? Uh, I see boxes here, boxes there. This looks like uh, the kind of stuff I used to use in machine tools, uh, uh, Bosch, uh, <laughs> Bosch struts. But uh, what, what are we looking at? So pretty much this vehicle started out its life as a self-driving car. Mm. So FLIR purchased a self-driving car platform with the software and everything with the ability to drive by itself with the intent of seeing how we might integrate our thermal cameras into it. Since then, our mission has changed a bit, and we stripped out a lot of the self-driving stuff. So you have an aftermarket uh, radar here that we don't bother using. Um, uh -huh. We don't bother using any. It's the most important stuff is on top of the vehicle, if you look at those. Mm. We have a thermal camera and an RGB camera, and those are uh, kind of the side-by-side -side comparisons that we're going to show you so that you can see with a thermal camera and, an, and a visible camera, you can get the best of both worlds. Huh. Okay, so... Um I have a question. Um, uh, FLIR doesn't like glass. Um, so <laughs> uh, we had to use this rock that, uh, that, uh, for, uh, that FLIR does like. What are you going to do? Um, hopefully you're not going to stick it on top of the roof because that's like a, a bad for, uh, bad for um, uh, uh, see, like the uh, coefficient of drag. So are, are, what are you going to, are you going to like bore a hole through the windshield or something so you can put that in or what, what's the 
plan? There are a few things that can be done. We actually have a next generation camera, much smaller than the one you see on there that that's fits big. into a shark fin. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's actually two cameras and yeah. the next generation thermals are getting smaller um, and fit within a, a typical shark fin, maybe side by side with an antenna. Hmm. That's one possibility if you want to shrink it on top of the vehicle. Well, but you, shark fin, um, I'm not sure about it. I think there's some legal mumbo jumbo with that, but a shark fin would definitely be a lot better uh, from, uh, from a drag coefficient uh, than what I see there. Um, but even, well, I don't know. Uh, it, I guess there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat. So. But you do bring up a very good point about putting it behind the windshield. That's R&D we're conducting now. And if one of your clients wants to get a windshield made for thermal, we can arrange that as well. Really? Yeah, mm. the, the, I think that if you look at the overall system cost, and that's kind of your expertise, I'd be interested yeah. to hear if you think putting it behind the windshield with this insert, is that more cost effective overall to do it that way? Well, it's uh, easy to bore a hole in a windshield. You have holes in a windshield a lot of times anyway. But, um, but um, the big thing is that um, I get rid of drag. Anytime I can get rid of drag, like we've said it like a zillion times, if I can get rid of weight, if I can get rid of drag, if I can get rid of friction, I don't really need as big a battery. And that's where, uh, that's where Tesla seems to win out almost every time. They, they do a good job at getting rid of the big three, as it were. If I was gonna pick between a shark Thin and a, and a hole in the in the glass or mounted inside or through the glass, I take that one. And the reason for that is because I would just get a a nice effect. I'd get a nice smooth effect. Anyhow, that's that's down the road. So let's have a look at what's inside then as well. Maybe we could go back here and you can certainly tell me what's going on with these two monitors back here. Actually, well, Ethan, would you be willing to maybe get this thing up and running or do, is it running? Yeah, excellent. Okay, so let's uh, get this running. This is data we recorded, and so you can kind of see what the thermal invisible looks like side by side. Great. So I've got uh, two screens here. You only got one over there. What happened? Uh, someone stole it. I think so. Somebody cannibalized it for another vehicle. Ah, okay, so this is the video that I, uh, I saw online. And I, I did notice that there is colorization here. Yeah, I can see that's a yellow line. I remember that there was a street sign that came up green like that one. So you can, but, uh, you can mix the blend as much as you want. Wow. So this is turning it into thermal, as you can see, yeah. invisible. You but can't really this see. This is the best. This is, what, this is what I really am interested in. That is as well. See that kid running across the road? That's the stuff that, uh, that I want to have, uh, I want to know about if I'm driving. Well, that's bright. That's not. So that's, uh, this, is, this is very good stuff. Wow, that is brilliant. I love that. I love that. Look, that is absolutely brilliant. So where were these pictures taken? It looks like... Um, these are from Santa Barbara. And that's another one, bicycles. Um, wow, that thing shines like a, a new dime. Oh, this is just, uh, yeah, I'm really liking this. So I get this image, I know what's going on. I can see right now that the, in, in color, I can see what's going on. How are you translating that into something that'll keep me from uh, smacking into a bicycle or worse, uh, uh, bumping into a child. So there are a few things that we can actually do there. We can turn the neural network on and there, now we have a bounding box around everything of interest in the scene. And that's so the computer can, uh, can decide what they want to do with the, with the vehicle controls. Mm. Um, but one potential application, and, and Teledyne FLIR doesn't really get involved so much with AHMI, but uh, if maybe for a heads-up display, augmented reality, yeah. you would be able to see a person of interest based on the tracking. We're also tracking uh, uh, people in the in the image, oh, yeah, in the vehicles in the image. Boxing. You yeah. can right. You can decide to highlight someone that is potentially a hazard to uh, to themselves. I've seen bicycles, but one of the things that I um, is near and dear to my heart. I used to have 
uh, my, I've had several bike motorcycles, and um, and uh, it seems like people don't see motorcycles. Um, would that be something that would pop up here? A bicycle is one thing. I mean, it's slow moving and stuff like that. But with a motorcycle, I mean, you know, I was one of those guys who used to ride that dotted line in the middle and whatnot. Um, motorcycle, it's kind of like probably take a few more risks. But can you, uh, could you somehow figure out um, um, how to avoid a motorcyclist and things like that? Absolutely. I think a motorcycle is even an easier use case because they're larger than a bicycle and they tend to be warmer yeah. than a bicycle. But and they're but they're also uh, more agile in a bicycle and are definitely faster. So, so we can operate at a sixty hertz frame rate. Yeah. So we can we can catch those those things are rapidly moving in the scene. Hmm. You know, I don't know if that was a bike or a that was a bicycle. I believe a bicycle. But yeah. So. What about um, animals? Around here, we smack into deer continuously. Um, I, I didn't see any animal kind of stuff happening. What's, uh, what's the difference uh, by, or is there a difference uh, in showing what, um, what a deer might do if it uh, pops out? Hugely important question for the insurance industry. I think State yeah. Farm said there are two million uh, animal collisions a year in the U.S. I would really think that's an underestimation. Maybe that's I mean, just Michigan. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> yeah. A um, lot of guys hit them here. Yeah. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, thermal sees living things better than anything. So a deer, mm. same thing. The challenge with a deer is with uh, machine learning, it's much harder to collect data on deer. There are not a lot of examples. You can take a, a camera out on the road and catch pedestrians all day long and yeah. collect and annotate data for that. But deer, it's a little more challenging, but what FLIR does now is use synthetic data, so a gaming engine, oh, so, uh, to uh, train our neural network. So uh, yeah. we'll be demonstrating that in the fall, the first uh, thermal neural network uh, detecting large animals. I think that's probably mm -hmm. one of the most important use cases for thermal as well. Well, when I was at Ford, we, uh, we did a lot with, um, with um, um, artificial intelligence and stuff like that. And what we, um, uh, what we were trying to do was get cognitive knowledge. With cognitive knowledge, um, I would see an animal, or sorry, I'd see human beings all the time, and then it would, you see something else. You're not exactly sure whether it's a human being with four, you know, crawling across the road or whatever, but eventually with cognitive knowledge, it would, it would, gain, um, it would gain more and more um, images if you like right and those images then could be computed into a hazard or what have you or something to definitely avoid so i see this stuff um are you going to be able to relate this to okay that light turned green what happens if the guy went through a red light or worse yet uh somebody else was coming through a red light and you were heading to mortal can we relay that information back into um into a system that uh, turns, uh, like hits the brakes. Right, and that, that's kind of the, the beauty of thermal plus uh, visible camera, and that you get the best of both worlds, yeah. where if you look at a scene just with a, a visible camera at night, you might see a lot of red lights, and it's hard to tell what's a red light on a, on a, a yeah. traffic signal versus a red light in the scene somewhere else. But yeah. with thermal, you can see the outlines of the, of the traffic light, and yeah. positively identify that as a traffic light time to stop. Mm. So it, it really does. The fusion of these two data streams is, well, is really like where the value lies. Just, uh, I don't want to uh, uh, bump off too bad. Can you go? Uh, yeah, it'll can. be right back to that in a moment. Okay, so what you had was all those boxes, and mm -hmm. it looks confusing probably to everybody that was looking at it on the screen, but for me, all those little boxes are, are targets that I can now uh, try and figure out how to avoid. Exactly. So this one's only got two targets, but that other scene had so maybe 30. That, uh, that's, the, that's the kind of stuff that I'm, I'm really thinking. That's why I like this system as opposed to LiDAR and radar and all the other stuff. By the way, um, I, I, uh, you know, everybody knows now that Tesla has abandoned ship on, um, on radar. Are they moving toward this, do you think? Or what are you, what's your speculation on that? I can't talk 
too specifically about any customers, but uh, I suspect uh, that thermal is, is going to be a pretty big part of uh, most OEMs' strategy in the future. Well, um, anybody that's, uh, that's, like I say, anybody that's done military or space or aircraft or whatever, especially if you're into the defense world, FLIR, I mean, it's like, it, goes, it just goes without saying that that's the right thing to do. That's a really good point uh, in that if you look at the self-driving car industry, very few of those people came have. from this is space the one or right defense. Here. You can see all the different numbers, all the different images that are being boxed and brought up. This is, this is how computers want to see things. They want to see it so that um, it's got an image, it's got a number, I can figure out what's going on. That's, this confusion stuff is what kills some of the other um, um, nighttime driving or crash avoidance systems. They don't like it when there's too many things in, the, uh, um, in its purview, so. Right, and thermal is, is very good at disaggregating yeah. crowded scenes like that, much better yeah. than a visible camera, or right. for that matter, I think the LiDAR. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the type of system that you want to have if you want to try and make sure you don't run into Gatling gun fire and things like that on a, on a aircraft. So some Anyhow. of those defense people are just starting to come into the self-driving industry, and they're the ones yeah. who are pulling this technology in, so that, that was the point I was making. Yeah. It, they're just starting to come into the scene. So what's the relationship uh, or how much communication is there between the Teledyne that I know and the uh, FLIR group that you're working for right now? Where's the, uh, where's the Nexus? So, um, <laughs> sorry, uh, Lexus, Nexus. Nexus means the edges, but where, where, uh, where are you at? So, yeah, Teledyne actually purchased FLIR uh, at the beginning of the year and the, everything was finalized, the, the merger was finalized just a matter of weeks ago. And it's actually very complementary technologies. Um, FLIR is particularly, the old FLIR was particularly uh, well represented in this particular uh, right. sensing modality, uh, 8 to 14 micron thermal sensing. Right. And uh, uh, Teledyne it brought uh, a lot of capability in other sensing modalities around outside of that band. Uh, there's some overlap, but uh, for the most part, mostly complementary. Cool. And I represent the, the Teledyne FLIR group that works on specifically thermal imaging. Well, this has been absolutely brilliant. I am really excited uh, to see what this looks like in in real life. So we're going to be taking a, a drive in the in the dark, and being as we've got um, <laughs> the potential for thunderstorms, one of the things that this does that none of the other stuff likes is rain. So uh, rain doesn't bother um, uh, any of the rain, or sorry, any of the FLIR projects that I've worked on. They don't care about rain, fog, or anything else. It just you, you just have you to just keep go. the lens clean, and you're good. Yeah, yeah. And again, why do I want that sitting over there? Because my windshield wiper, I can figure out something to keep it clean, uh, or right. at least not to have uh, water deposits on it. So, anyway, this is very good. Let's uh, let's go for a real ride. Okay, appreciate it, Teddy. Okay. Let's do okay. it. Okay, good. Okay, so we're flying along here on uh, Main Street in Clawson after you know visiting the Clawson Steakhouse and um, and we're just looking at all of the imagery here that we've got it's not dark but this is the worst time of the day to drive this is uh, dusk or twilight whatever the insurance companies hate this time of the day because this is where accidents happen um, tragically there's a few bumps in this road so so uh, Eric's having <laughs> going to have a, either a really sore arms or whatever. So as we're looking here, we can see it's, it's imaging, it's picking up images of things moving and not moving. We just passed a couple of kids a bit ago, so we got a chance to see that. It's in essence showing us everything that's going on. So right now we're looking at bounding boxes, which are coming out of the neural network that we described that uh, you may want to show your customers is a quick way to get started with thermal. We've done all the work already. We've created the neural network, we've done the training of it off with data, and you can see the performance of this at, right now is, is catching all of the pedestrians and vehicles in, in the scene. So that would be um, 
any car, any uh, bicycle or a motorcycle that's running, because those have heat signatures as well. And the bicycle does with a, with a human on top of it for sure. And we're able to see these uh, actors in the scene at a much longer range than the visible camera. So if we put it all on visible like this, you can see a lot of those people disappear in the visible spectrum. Mm. And I'm watching two of them. I can't see them with my naked eye, but I can see the little red box. Right, and when you turn on and the thermal, you see them very yeah. clearly. Yeah. The thermal camera sees them at much longer range. Our customers for AEB tell us that that range should be about 70 meters or more. And we can yeah. easily do that with our, our cameras. Currently visible can detect pedestrians at considerably less range than that, probably less than half. Well, I'm looking down the street at what looks like about maybe two blocks and seeing a uh, seeing a, an image or a little red box telling me there's somebody coming at me. So, yes, the range seems to be very good. There's one right, th yeah, two of them. What would you estimate that, about 70, 80 meters when we first picked uh, them up? I would guess maybe more than that even. The interesting thing is this technology is on a lot of vehicles already right now. It's just not utilized, this, this data. Really? Yep. So you can imagine, at least on high-end vehicles where it already has one of these thermal cameras, why not tap into the data? Because it is very valuable information and tie it mm. into the AEB system or a heads-up display. Yeah. interesting is it seems to be picking up like for eight okay boom 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 they all come up now or quite a few of them came up but it's only picking up the hot cars maybe the cars are just parked or something but not all the cars so that that's one of the things about thermals picking obviously yeah. the, the thermal signature so that's so that's great for cars that are in movement you want to make sure that you're seeing other cars on the road with you yeah. and park cars less so Obviously, you don't want to hit a parked car, yeah. but that's... Well, it was actually, that thing was in the, um, or that uh, car was parked in the, um, in a parking lot, not even in, on the road. And by the way, did you see it picked up a person that was standing in back of a mailbox? Uh, that was uh, kind of cool as well. This is kind of like what I was saying before. I, I really want to see something that's going to warn me about some kid darting out from between two two parked cars and again you can see well that's a whole mob of people but but you're seeing people ducking from behind trees right. where yeah. they're partially occluded right. or from behind a car where you only see the top of their torso and head yeah well John uh, thank you very much for showing us your technology I'm really impressed I'm happy uh, I've told uh, lots of people that I, I really like the FLIR technology um, it's it does everything I was kind of hoping it would do, except for looking for dogs. But <laughs> hey, <laughs> stay tuned. It's coming. Stay tuned. It's coming. So anyway, I'd like to thank you very much for coming by, and uh, and uh, we'll be popping this up. And I'm hoping that uh, that maybe some some of the OEMs will be uh, interested in in the future and and uh, giving you a call. Stay tuned. It's coming soon. Great. Good deal. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you again. So anyway, thanks very much. Oh, and thank you very much for the Claussen Steakhouse. Uh, great dinner. Thank you. Thank you. So anyway, uh, stay tuned for uh, more of uh, Monroe Live down the road. We're going to be uh, talking with uh, other new technology people, and uh, we're trying to keep you abreast of what technology is out there. Keep tipping those cashiers, and thanks very much. Bye.